Isn't it great that it's still the international break? Said no one ever. Glorious. No, I won't give in. Hello everyone, this is CJ Novo992 and today we are back from a brand new video. Today is a video, I'm just happy there is a video, ladies and gentlemen, because me and thee, we all know that during an international break, I get tested for my creativity, hence why there be no videos. But thankfully, I have been handed a lifeline because it is time for part one of the International Roundup. But before we go any further on with today's video, I have to take a little brief moment just to say thank you so much to this month's sponsor, One Football. The link will be down in the description below. Again, you download it, it's free, doesn't cost you a penny, and you just get Rangers news. It's like me, but an app and less annoying. Now, after yet another truth dagger in the old tart, let's get to the football then, shall we? And as always, let's start off with the home nation itself then. Scotland. Now I know a lot of people aren't interested in the Scotland national team setup and hell there's enough reasons and layers to why that is. However, our boy was starting in the midfield, Mr. Ryan freaking Jack. And Jack played the full 90 minutes as Scotland got a rare away win that for once wasn't against San Marino. Nah, 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 nah. It was against Cyprus. Now, the final score was 2-1 and he obviously didn't get any goals and assists. However, he did play a part in the very first goal as he was the one that got the ball to McGinn, who'd done a beautiful spin before giving it to Christie, who'd done the rest with a top bin finish. However, his overall performance, now it wasn't a standout 10 out of 10 performance from Ryan Jack. I think he was in a lot more restrictive role than the one he's currently got at Rangers, you know what I mean? Box to box, he's willing to get forward and have a pop. The Scotland setup looked like they asked him to be more restrictive and be a bit more of a lynch bin in the middle of the park. He was just kind of sitting a wee bit deeper, keeping everything neat and tidy, just spreading the ball and retaining possession. Now obviously there's stuff going around the internet like this, but didn't take any notice of that. That's the usual hate-filled sickness that they've got where they just identify the Rangers player and it's always the Rangers player's fault. Didn't, didn't give any of the boo boys even a second of your day, ladies and gentlemen. It was a solid and effective performance from Ryan Jack. Was it standout? No. But was he the weakest player in the park? No. By a long shot. Moving on to the under 21s for Scotland, then, shall we? We had Middleton, Stephen Kelly, and Robbie McCrory all called up to the under 21 national setup. However, it was a disappointing day for them as they were beaten by 10 men, Greece conceding a late penalty on which actually moves Greece top of the under 21s group now and pushes Scotland from top all the way to third. It was a disappointing result overall. Now, it was very, very strange because this is one of the first times in a long time we've discussed the under-21s for Scotland and Ross McCrory wasn't captain. He wasn't even called up to the squad. And without the under-21s captain, they ended up getting beat. Now, Robin McCrory also didn't play in the game. Glenn Middleton and Stephen Kelly did, however, Robbie was left on the bench. Very, very disappointing for the under-21s of Scotland, but there's a hell of a lot of talent there. I'm sure they will respond, and hopefully Ross is a part of the squad next time. However, we're going to transfer over from Scotland and spend a wee bit of time over in Northern Ireland as we're here to speak about the one, the only, Stephen Davis. And it was a special evening for Stephen Davis. We're going to speak about the football in just a brief moment. However, we need to take a second to reflect on what Stephen Davis has managed to achieve. It's truly remarkable. He's went out there and bet David Beckham's record to become the most capped outfield player in UK history. A phenomenal, phenomenal achievement to the man. And it's a true testament to this man's dedication and hunger to his country that he's went ahead and broken this record. Whether it's raining or it's cold or his nose is running or he's got a dentist appointment, Stephen Davis has always been available and always turned up when called upon and he's always worked his arse off. What an example he must be to the younger players coming into the national team being able to look at that and everything that he's achieved in his career that he still turns up and works his arse off every single time. Congratulations Stephen Davis. You deserve it, mate. Now, unfortunately, we have to turn our attention to the park, and it's sad that we have to say this, because honestly, my heart bled for him. Stephen Davis ended up missing a penalty in a 0-0 draw versus Holland. Again, leaving everything to the next game of football they will be playing. But if I'm honest with you, he still played well in the game of football. And when you look beyond the clickbait of him missing a penalty, he still led his country versus a very, very talented Holland in the midst of its revolution. By the way, they never got anything for Northern Ireland at home. They dug in, they dug deep, and they fought and battled. And that is the example you get from Stephen Davis as captain. And as for the under-21s for Northern Ireland, former youth and reserve captain young Cammy Palmer is expected to play a part in Northern Ireland's game tonight at 8pm versus Romania, so good luck to them. Hopefully, they can get their qualifying campaign off 
to a good start because they sit second ball. It's not been the greatest campaign by any stretch of the imagination, but they've got a chance tonight, so good luck to them. Right, let's leave the UK then, shall we, and head over to Finland. Now, this is where the feel-good story of the week's going to come in. This warmth that you're about to feel right now will keep you warm during the international break, ladies and gentlemen, because Glenn Kamara and Finland have qualified for their first Euros. And it's so good that I get to sit here and say that because Finland has been a bit of a revelation so far and Glenn Kamara has been putting out performance after performance. I mean, if you watch these international recaps, every single one we've done, Glenn Kamara has been a standout. So for once, the performances of a hard-working team is actually rewarded and they've made it. Now, they do have one other game which is going to come in a couple of days' time, which will determine if they're in seed three or four for the group. So good luck to them in the last game. Hopefully Finland and Glenn Kamara can have one more great performance before the Euros. And let's keep the feel-good momentum going then, shall we? Over to Croatia, and we're going to speak about the best fullback in Scottish football today. It's none other than Bonabea Barisic. Once again, Dame Barisic finds he picked up an assist and a free one win for Croatia. And it's, and it's so good to just see Barisic just continue that level of performance because... You always go to pinch yourself and say, oh no, is this going to be when he just doesn't live up to his form and he's going to drop back to it? Is he going to refer back to the old BB? Well, ladies and gentlemen, he has not looked back since that goal versus St Mirren. He's still playing at the highest of high level and he showed it in international football with a wonderful assist and long May that continue. A truly fantastic display from Bonnebeer Barisic, which also helps Croatia qualify for the Euro. So that's back to back. Ladies and gentlemen, it's just great to see Bears Dane Hings at the international level. Two standout performances back to back. Now though, we're going to travel over to Nigeria. And Joe Aribo, by the way, actually has two games to break down. Sneaking another one in there. Cheeky for you, Joe. Now the first one was a couple of days ago. He made his competitive debut for Nigeria. And a bit more restrictive role, kind of like we said about Ryan Jack earlier on. Not really the, the attacking threat that he is. For Rangers, his job was to break things up in the midfield alongside Ndiri. And that was exactly the case in a game that just finished just a couple seconds ago when I'm recording today's video. Again, Nigeria picks up another three points today. So now sit in the top of the group with six points. And him and his partnership with Ndiri is something that's still pretty fresh. But I think it's definitely something that a lot of Nigeria fans are excited about. I mean, you type in Joe Rebo on Twitter right now, you're hearing his name and Ndiri's and a lot. A lot of praise. Now before we get to the nation and the boy that we all want to talk about, there is one other nation to speak about very, very briefly and that is the short trip over to Sweden. Now Sweden did qualify as well for the Euro, so massive congratulations. However, Philippe Hollander once again didn't play. He was an unused substitute in the game that got them the qualification, which is very, very disappointing. However, you think about it, he was a part of the last four squads before he joined us. There was that long period where he didn't play. Now he's playing consistently. There's certainly an option or a chance for Hollander to fight and get that starting place for Sweden. And it's just going to come with more and more games for the Glasgow Rangers, which seems to be happening now. So congratulations to big Philippe and Sweden as well. Hopefully we see Philippe Hollander hangs at the Euros. Now though, it's time to pack your bags for one last time as we head over to Colombia to speak about the man, the myth, the Morelos. And I honestly cannot express how much joy it brings me to be able to sit here with a massive smile on my face to talk about this man because not only did he break his duck and score a goal, which was vital in the game by the way, the game winner, but he also put on a very good performance for his country and yet if you followed Morelos for a long time, he's always talked about being that guy for the national setup. Well, he certainly showed it in that game versus Peru, which was once again a very fiery encounter. However, when the time came to go ahead and win the game, Alfredo Morelos stepped up 94th minute to slap the ball very, very closely over the freaking line. You saw what it meant to him. You saw what it meant to everyone. You saw what it meant to us on Twitter. I've never seen a reaction like that, ladies and gentlemen, for a Rangers player playing for their country. Honestly, I haven't seen it with my own eyes and I genuinely loved every second there. And I know for a fact I wasn't the only one that sat there after the game watching every single interview featuring Alfredo Morello, smiling when he smiled, nodded when he nodded, like I knew what was happening or what was being said. So delighted, so buzzing, a fantastic performance from Alfredo Morelos. Now you're going to get the bitter press, try and downplay his achievements. I mean, you're already seeing stuff like this. Honestly, have you ever seen son so hateful and bitter as to that writing finally after he scored in only his third start for his country and only his fifth appearance overall? Sickening bit. Disney man, Alfredo Morelos was the man for Colombia and long may that 
continue. But that's it, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. That is it for part one of the international roundup. What do you guys think? I'm, I'm buzzing to see your reaction down there in the comment section below because not only have I missed the interaction between me and the, but I'm interested to see what you think about the Bears on tour. So if you don't know what to do by now, I'll tell you. Just let me know your thoughts and opinions down there in the comment section below. And before we wrap up today's video, I have been CJ Over 92. Thank you so much for watching and bye.